Hey, what is going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Megan Nunez of FanDuel, who is here to give us a couple of future bets in the NFL that she has taken before the season begins. What's going on, Megan? Not a whole lot. What's going on with you? Not much. I'm getting ready for fantasy football drafts. I feel prepared. I'm trying to go down my card to figure out what futures I want to make, and you're here to help, so I appreciate it. Let's begin with the NFC West, specifically with the Seattle Seahawks, who right now are plus 1,000 to win the NFC. When you have Russell Wilson as your quarterback, anything seems possible. And this is certainly in that realm of possibility. Right. So with this particular bet, it really all starts and ends with Russell Wilson. Um, last year, he was able to bring that Seattle Seahawks team to an 11-5 and season. And it was basically just Russell Wilson. He was arguably in the run for MVP, but we all know Lamar Jackson is just way too good, and he definitely deserved that. But during the offseason, the Seattle Seahawks have added um, offensive and defensive weapons. On the offense, they've added Greg Olson, and they've added Dorsett to stretch the field. And on defense, they had one of the biggest transactions in the offseason with Jamal Adams um, trading away first-round draft picks for him. They also added a Dunbar and a Bruce Irving. While that might not seem exciting, um, he already knows that scheme and he's going to fit right back in. So while everybody does have their guy, we have the guy in Russell Wilson in Seattle. The pieces are there for the Seahawks to make noise both in the NFC West and in the NFC. When you have a quarterback like Russell Wilson, everything else kind of falls into place. Another year of DK Metcalf and that Tyler Lockett-Wilson connection, plus the Jamal Adams addition on the defensive end. Things are looking up for Seattle, and you can get them to win the NFC at plus 1,000. Let's stay in the NFC, but go to the NFC South, where, of course, the Buccaneers made the biggest noise with Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski in the offseason. Gronk is back, but you don't think his yardage will be back to pre-retirement standards. You're taking the under 599 and a half yards. You do not believe he'll get 600 yards this season. How come? Um, well, I don't think that he's going to get 600 yards this season. One, because he is coming off a of retirement year. Um, two, we have two better, not better, but we have two other tight ends with Brayton Howard. And then you have reliable hands and wide receivers with um, Mike Evans and Godwin. Um, so while I think that Tom Brady does get a lot of action, I don't see him running down the field much. Um, he's injury prone. He's older. And him and Tom Brady, they have chemistry, they have connection, and I really see that coming in play in one spot, and that specifically is the red zone. All right, so while Rob Gronkowski may not stretch the field anymore and Cameron Brady, O.J. Howard are going to do their thing, Gronk's still going to be an asset, and I'll tell you why in a moment. Because there's still that trust level between Brady and Gronk, specifically, as Megan mentioned, in the red zone. The over-under for touchdowns is five and a half. So even if Gronk is a red zone specialist, even if he's a blocking specialist, you, Megan, still believe that he can go over this number of five and a half touchdowns scored. Not too many, despite with the fact that Cameron Bray and O.J. Howard are both in play still? Oh, yeah. Um, and this is plus money uh, when I looked at it last. So I really like this prop because, as I said, um, Brady and Gronk do have chemistry. I mean, Gronk has been nearly catching passes from Tom Brady for a decade, and now they're in um, Tampa Bay. They're under Bruce Arians. It's looser. It's more fun. Um, I just, again, I do not see Gronk running down the field. I see him, um, I don't see him being on the field 100% of the time, but I see him being on the field 100% of the time while they are in the red zone. So I think he's going to be a huge target. Him and Brady can easily get on a roll and knock three touchdowns out in one game. Um, again, I really think this piggybacks off the under prop that I just gave you with Gronk um, with him just dominating the red zone. Gronk's not coming back to stay out of the end zone. I'll tell you that much. And Brady and Gronk have that connection, as Megan noted. Gronk's only back for Brady and to score touchdowns and to spike the football. We're going to see over five and a half of those Gronk spikes this season. There you have it. Those are three future bets that are worth making right now over at the FanDuel Sportsbook. Megan, we appreciate the time and good luck. Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all having me. Absolutely no problem at all. Tomorrow on the program, Tom Vecchio will join me as we take a look at some late round tight ends to target in your fantasy football league. For Megan Nunez, I'm Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for watching. Get those bets in right now at the FanDuel Sportsbook. We'll see you back here tomorrow for another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up.